Hey, how is everybody doing? Welcome to Electronic Campfire, unlucky number 13, but I think it's gonna be a great show. I'm still trying to deal with talking with these things in my mouth, so I'm just gonna get that right off the bat. I've hated dealing with it, to be honest with you. It's hard when I'm editing to, because I'm trying to enunciate, you know, my words, and I'm trying to learn to say, you know, the F word, <laughs> right, over and over. How's everybody doing? Mr. Jarble, are you here? I, that's the first thing I gotta find out. Yes, <laughs> he is here. <laughs> How you doing, Mr. Jarble? Tom, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you both. I really appreciate the support for the channel. Now, Mr. Jarble, I know you have to leave, so I, I'll, I'll get you a pass, an excuse pass today, but make sure you come back, okay? Um, how is everybody else doing? Who do we have here? We got uh, Robert, Brian. How you doing, Brian? Florian, good to see you, pal. Good to see you. We got Scott. All right, Norman, Alan. Let's see who else is in here. Gordon, Laura. Hi. Okay, we got a, we got a lot of people, and we also have Gear Iguana, special guest Gear Iguana on the show. You know, to be perfectly honest with you, this hasn't been the easiest week. You know, I learning to just deal with these things in my mouth and, and getting over that is, I'm still not over it yet, but I had to do like twice as many takes in the video that went up today. It just took me twice as long to edit because I felt like I wasn't pronouncing my words right, but I think I'm past that now. So um, yeah, it was, it was kind of a little bit of a difficult week, but you ever have that happen where all of the light bulbs in where you live, like in your house or your apartment, they all go out at the same time. They all seem to need to be changed at the same time, right? So the opposite of that is kind of what's been happening over the last couple of days, where for months, I never got any test units from Fujifilm. And I, you know, they just couldn't get them to me. They didn't have them. There was always an issue. And, you know, and I didn't really have any other kind of affiliate relationships with any other stores or anything like that. So when gear would come out, if I couldn't afford it myself, which is <laughs> most of the time, I couldn't get it. I couldn't bring it into the studio. I couldn't make videos really about it, you know. And just... It just so happened that this week, all of the stars aligned, you know, perfectly, and some gear arrived, and some more gear is on the way. So the first set of gear came from Fujifilm themselves. And it's, by the way, everything that you're gonna see in today's video unboxing is loner gear. I have to return all of it, every last bit of it, unfortunately. So I just want to get that out of the way right now. So I got to be a little careful with it. Uh, I can't treat it like I treat my other gear. So part of this gear, in fact, everything you're going to be seeing today is from Fujifilm. And you see that? Fujifilm. I, I still have problems saying that. Everything you see is from Fujifilm. And, but when I was in New York City, I connected with a sales affiliate person at B&H Photo. And what's funny is that I was in the process of making a video about how awesome I think B&H Photo is for the reason that it's such a gigantic place and yet it really has this small town store personal feel to it. That was the impression I got. And then what happens? Omar puts out a video about B&H. Literally that right at the time I was going to do it. So I scrapped that idea. I may still do something for B&H, but the reason I bring them up is because Fuji sent me the X-H2S, okay? Loaned it out to me. B&H is going to send the X-H2. So the wires could cross. I could have both cameras in the studio at the same time. And either way, it, this is all awesome, but I plan on doing ex as many tests as I can. I've got them for a few weeks. I'm gonna be testing in comparison with the X-T4. I'm gonna be, you know, d running, as, doing low light, high ISO noise testing, you know, as, as fast as I can. You know, this is all great, but the other issue is that this all came 
you know, if this had all happened in, you know, August or even in July, I had so much time. Now in October, I'm backed up with stuff. I've got so many things on the on the plate right now. So I've got to make this work. So yeah, so I just wanted to kind of give you a little uh, channel update. All right, so who's here? Blue Tech 318, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, you made it today. I'm really glad you did. I know you've wanted to come over the past few streams and there's never a good time for me to do these streams. And I wish, one thing I, you know, it's, it's not New Year's. I can't make a New Year's resolution right now, but you know, if I could make a New Year's resolution, it would be to find some way to commit to doing a live stream at a specific day, at a specific time, in well in advance so that everybody would have a heads up right now the way things are in my schedule I can't do that. They're pretty much pop-up streams But they've always been Friday at 4 p.m. So pretty much if you kind of Tune in at 4 p.m. On Friday Eastern time chances are I'll, I'll be here Okay, who else is here uh, before we go Paul? How you doing? Yes, that's right um, Let me well, I got to get my software going here. All right, so uh, that's right. I guess I did. You know, I found out about the firmware yesterday from you lovely people on Discord, and I scrambled into the studio and haven't left. I literally finished the firmware update video and was in the process of uploading it and finalizing what you have to do when you upload it to YouTube. I got the last thing done 40 seconds before the 11 o'clock Friday deadline. That's that's how close it was. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I wanted to get that up there and right now it's the number one video on the channel. Anytime I do a firmware update, it's the number one video. So I, I take those seriously and people want to know about firmware updates and to be perfectly honest with you, I want to shine a big light on firmware updates. I want firmware updates to become an event. You know why? Because the bigger we make the, a deal out of firmware updates, the more pressure we put on certain companies to do firmware updates. So firmware up updates are a big deal. Okay, so anyhow, let's do some audience participation today. By the way, I've got everything ready to do these unboxings, all right? First of all, what are we gonna unbox? Well. XH2S, okay, obviously this, the XH2S, that's the, uh, the, probably the first thing we'll open, but it wouldn't be complete without a lens. And I gotta tell you something, I am more excited about this lens than any lens I've ever looked at for Fujifilm, the 18 to 120. Now I've shot with this lens before in New York City during the Fuji Summit and if just having it for 30, 45 minutes, if it was as good then as I remember it, this may, the word is may, may turn out to be my all-time favorite lens, okay? I'm serious about this, so I'm excited to try this one out. Honestly, I'm more excited to open and use this than any other thing. Now, there's one other little item that's a little bit larger Okay, <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't realize lenses came in boxes this big. Oh my goodness, hello. <laughs> right? What the heck? This is like a telescope, this isn't a lens, it's a telescope. This is, you know, the Hubble part two. So yeah, um, we'll be opening all three of these. Uh, where are we at now? 409. We're good. We're good on time. All right, let me just check back in here. <laughs> okay, 10 p.m. in Poland. Well, it's evening there for you. Welcome. Welcome visitors from Poland. Oh, I don't even want to open these things. I just want to talk to you. Please do your B&H video. Fine, I'll do my, I will, I will do my B&H video. Omar, if you're watching, I need to have you come to a cameo. I didn't get enough footage when I was there of you. If, yeah. Anthony, hello, hello Dallas, hello, hello. Anybody from Florida here tonight? Um, one of my favorite vacation spots was Fort Myers, was, they're still around, but Fort Myers and Sanibel Island, um, which I've been to and beautiful place, Sanibel. And uh, I am so sorry, my heart goes out to anyone in that area of Florida right now. Um, that is not, not a good situation. Okay, so let's do some audience participation. You're gonna choose, all right, whether we open these boxes with this cheap, this is like maybe 
a dollar or two, okay? It's a cheap little, you know, it's what I've been using on the channel, right? To open things up. Or we could go, you know, full on butterfly knife, right? And use this to open it up. Or I just got this, it's, it's like another little, you know, little knife. <laughs> so let me know in the comments, do you want El Cheapo, okay? Butterfly knife, or I don't know what this thing is, just normal knife. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. And that's what I'll use to open them up. You gotta have, this is a live stream. I, I never get to ask the audience and then it's like, choose your own adventure. You know, oh yeah, they say go this way, boom. So it's fun for me. All right, let me see. Are we getting here? Love, big love from Croatia. Hi, hello, Croatia. All right. <laughs> okay, everybody's, everybody's saying different stuff. All right, well, we got two for butterfly. All right, that's good. God, it's hot in here. All right, so butterfly, butterfly. All right, I have a feeling it's going to be butterfly. Um, yeah, let's get these things open. So this is so cheap, this thing, but that's what I used for three years on this channel to open stuff. Why not? You know, you see these YouTubers, you know, they pull out these really expensive knives and then they call them their everyday carry. Right. They're not carrying these big knives around every day, please. Uh, Pensacola. Okay. That's, I know that area. New York. Greetings from Germany. Wow. All right. We're doing the butterfly knife. We got that definitely by a, uh, but fingernails. No, I'm not doing my fingernails on this. No. All right. Gangsta knife. <laughs> yeah, it is a gang. True story. I bought this knife in Mexico. <laughs> okay. When I was in college in Tijuana. That's all I'm going to say for now. All right. Anyhow, moving on. Let's open up uh, an XH2S. Now, I did some homework before this live stream for you. Okay, I don't just do a live stream, you know, hi guys, I do a little bit more. And I set up different camera angles. So we got camera one right here, camera two right here, camera three right there, and camera four right there. Isn't that great? You'll see it from all angles. Okay, let's do this. So we are gonna open up an X-H2S. This was the first of the two, am I live? Yeah, it, this was the first of the two Fujifilm X-H2 cameras, right, to come out. And they marketed this more as, one of them as speed and the other one as power, I believe. So this is obviously the, uh, the stacked sensor one. And um, let's, let's see what you get in the box, right? Okay, let me zoom in, let me get this here, all right. Opening it up, opening it up. Okay, so we got this little box right here. Boy, this is a little hot. Let me turn this down. There we go. Okay, so uh, cords, you know, your usual stuff, cords. There's international plugs, all these different international plugs, stuff like that. Okay, so your power, basically all your power needs are right here in the box. Okay, so that's that. Next, we have a little, I don't know what this is, a brochure? Let's see. Uh, we got, uh, oh, look at this. If this isn't an advertisement for Capture One, wow. That's very telling that Capture One is right in the box when you open up a Fuji cam. Right, it's a good deal they have with Fuji. All right, so Capture One's in there. All right, next, here we go. Now remember, oh, one thing I do want to say, these are all test units, so, you know, they've been open before, so if you see stuff that looks ripped or torn, it, it's not that Fuji's selling it that way, these are, are used test units, okay? Just saying. All right. So, opening this up, here we go. Look at that. What a beautiful camera this is. Look at that. I see, I see a PASM dial. <laughs> okay, I, I see a PASM dial here. A PASM dial in the house. We have an articulating screen, okay. And let's see, on this side, we have our SD card and CF Express. You see that? Look at that. Look at that. 
This is a lot harder to do live than it is, you know, when I can edit. Just saying. Okay, so then we've got on this side, my favorite thing of all. I don't know if you can see it. Full-sized HDMI port. Full-sized HDMI port. So there, that's pretty cool. And then here we've got our USB-C and microphone and headphone jacks. Okay, which is great. So, um, something to keep in mind is they took away the AFS, AFC, and AFM switch and replaced it with a button. You see that right there? And let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. That little S. Ah. Oh. Now, just first impression, this is the first time I am holding an XH2S. Again, same thing that I said about the XH2 when I was in New York. It feels, this grip feels great. I mean, unless you've got really small hands, this is the way Fuji needs to go. The, the, this type of a grip, this, let me show you. I don't know if you can see it closer, but uh, you see how much depth it has? You see that right there? Okay, so that's nice. Uh, anything else in here? No, nothing, nothing else. Uh, the cord, now, there is something I have to say um, because I just gonna tell you how I feel. This is a camera strap, okay? Camera strap is in here. Um, I don't, th oh, here it is. Wait, this is, I guess this is the charger. Okay, there is a little charger that comes with it. I thought it didn't have a charger included, but I guess I'm thinking of Apple products. So yeah, we're good, we're good. Um, so that's the X-H2S. Now, here's what I need you all to do, please, for me, help me out with this, because I don't have a lot of time with this camera and I want to make sure that I'm making the best use of that time. So, I am not gonna be able to get to all of these comments. There's, there's no way. But I will read them tonight. I, they're all saved, okay? They get saved into this file that I have access to. Let me know, please let me know what video or topic or angle or whatever do you wanna see me cover with the X-H2S, okay? I, I can't possibly do everything, but if enough people say, I want low ISO, you know, I'm sorry, low noise, high ISO, I'll do that. But let me know what you want because I, you know, I'm kind of in the dark a little bit with this. So, uh, okay. All right, we're one third done. We're one third done. I am so hot. Okay. We're gonna open up a lens now. The 18 to 120. This is a very interesting lens, and this is the entire reason, pretty much, that the firmware update came out today to deal with the button, the zoom button on this lens. So the X-T4, the X-T3, X-S10, and the X-H, yeah, those three cameras for sure got the menus set up for this lens. Um, it's a big deal. And I think this is going to become more of a norm to have that kind of function on these, these type of lenses. Now, let me just see who's here. More light, please. The camera body is too black. Okay, you got it. Hold on. Let's do this. Let's do, yeah, that is too dark. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'd rather be a little bit too bright. At least you can see it. Here, hold on a second. Okay, here. How's that? Is that better? Is that better? Can you see it better? Looks good to me on my monitor, but you know. Uh, so what I would say, yeah, I know what I was pointing at. It was this thing right here. They took, now you see my finger looks terrible, but, but who the hell cares about looking at my hands, right? So let's look at the camera. The camera looks good. It's properly exposed there. <laughs> right? So. <laughs> okay, this is not like a Gerald Undone unboxing. <laughs> I'm not that professional. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So we're going to do this. Yes. 18 to 120. Here we go. Let's open it. Let's open it. Oh, there's nothing really to cut. So I'll just kind of do this. <laughs> there. Okay. Okay. We got one of those 
you know, pretty but useless cloth bags. Okay, nothing to that, really. Um, oh, we got some an owner's manual for this lens. Pretty thick. Look at that. Right, quite a bit to that. All right. We got a uh, little warranty thing. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, let's look at the lens hood. Okay. What do you think of that? It's just a typical plastic lens hood. Okay, that's that. And here is the lens itself. Okay, here we go. Oops. Now, yes, let's talk about this lens. I think that's all that's in the box. Yeah, okay, that's everything. Okay, so we have a very interesting lens here. Um, this 18 to 120, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but it has three rings, basically, three functions on it, okay? One of them is the focus right here. We have the zoom, and then we have a little ring that does zoom focus control, and you can set it in menu of what you want this to do, and it uses kind of a motor to do that. Let me see if we can... I want to see if we can actually get you something to look at. No memory card. That's okay. I don't need that. All right. So let's try this. I'm going to pull this out of here. Okay. So this is what it looks like on the camera. And what I'm going to do is see if we can actually use it live. Okay. All right, do we have picture? Oh, look at that! <laughs> That's great. I'm just gonna throw all this in automatic so that you know I'm not having to deal with with um, now. Okay, so it's Zoomus. Yeah, you can you can hear that motor. Whoops. All right, let me put a memory card in this thing. How's everybody doing, by the way? Am I going too slow? Too fast? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, <laughs> hold on, I gotta, gotta put this up on the thing. That's pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go into zone. All right. Let's see if I can. Um, okay. So if I can, there we go. I'll pull this up here. Can you see? Okay. So at, what I'm doing basically is... I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do the zoom, and there's also the zoom button. So I'm going to kind of just show you how this, how smooth it is. Look at that. Let's see if I can get the, the electric motor to go. Huh. There we go. Okay, I just switched you. Look at that. Okay, so here it is totally wide open. Here it is. Totally wide open, okay? You see that? Totally wide open. I'm now going to zoom using the motor. Pretty cool. And that's at... Auto now, remember, I have everything on automatic right now for exposure. But the whole selling point of this lens is that there is no expose... expose I can't talk with these braces. There is no exposure shifting, okay, that happens with this lens. Um, I am going to test it, though. This is something that I have been looking forward to, and the focal length is incredible. Um, it's just, it's a really incredible lens. I, I just, I love this thing. And what, what's interesting, though, is that a number of people that I've talked to that use this lens have been solely using this. They only use this. They never use this. So one of the things I mentioned to, you know, to Fujifilm in one of the videos is, could we get this dial that's kind of useless almost, at least allow us the ability to assign it to do something, you know, as, as another assignment, like you can with the ZF button. So. It's a really nice lens. What do you think of this thing? I mean, it's hard to just show you right now, but this is, 
you know, the focal range. Look, I can go all the way across the studio there. Turn, and it's, yeah, the motor is, uh, and now if we go into the menu, because of, now remember, I am on, this is an, this is an X-T4, okay? So on an X-T4, you have this new area in button dial setting. There it is right here, power zoom lens function. And then we can do all kinds of stuff. Constant speed zooms. You can just, there's, they had relocated some of these other things. I mean, look at this. There's so much in here that you can assign to the ZF button. So for example, if I didn't, you know, for whatever reason, if I wanted to use it as a, think about this for a second. You could assign back button focus to this button here. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, you could do anything you want. That's really cool. So I'm really excited to try this out. Uh, this lens right here has a 72 millimeter filter size. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's in true. And that's a good point. Um, I believe this is very true. If the motor is broken, you can't zoom with it. Um, good point, but I, you know, I don't know, you know, if you look at say the, the 140, okay. The, what is the 55 to 140? Same thing. I mean, you know, if you break a dot, <laughs> one of the zoom rings, it, you're going to have a problem. This though, for sure would be more delicate and only time would tell it, you know, how often does it break? How rugged can it be? You know, because if you're dealing with a focal length of 18 to 120, the idea is versatility. You're, you're taking this thing everywhere. And really, this is more of a video lens, I think, than anything else because of the ability for it to not shift exposure around, right? So, um, it, I, no, I, I don't know if it's, it's a good question. Let me put it up on the, on the sh screen. I don't know if it's better for video or stills, but I can tell you that it's better for video than most of the other still lenses that Fuji has because of the fact that when you're zooming in and out, go, go look at my Tamron review. You know, that lens, the 70 millimeter one, the zoom, fine lens for stills, but if you go to zoom in for video, you're gonna see incredible amounts of you know, focus breathing and problems on it. So, uh, yeah. Um, and I don't know the answers to a lot of these questions that I'm seeing come in. And so that's why I got to make a video because, you know, I, I literally just took it out of the box. Now I have shot with it and I shot a few images that were in my Fujifilm New York video, but I mean, come on, we had this lens for 30 minutes. You know, that's just not enough time. So I am, here it is. And so please, like the other camera, let me know in the comments what you'd like me to test on this lens specifically. And I will do my best to accommodate for sure. Um, and yeah, F4 is the max. That's correct. Let me take a look and just verify that. So um, let's see here. We're at F5.6. Yeah, F4 is the max for sure with this lens. Okay, so I am going to now, we're doing good on time. We've got just enough time to open up another toy. And then I'll do some Q&As, a little connecting with the audience, and, and then we'll, we'll kick off the weekend. So, um, all right, let's see here. George, thank you so much for this. Mr. Jarbel. Yeah, I, I, if you're going to celebrate on anything, celebrate on the full-size HDMI. That is the number one thing. I cannot... Uh, let me tell you this. I have an X-T2, an X-T3, and an X-T4 in this studio, and all three of those cameras have a broken micro HDMI port. This one is the best of all of them, but it, if I move this just slightly, I will lose the signal. So... It's fine if it's locked down on a tripod, but if I, if I pick this camera up and I'm wanting to kind of do some B-roll with it and connect externally, I can't do it. It's, it's impossible. That micro HDMI is horrible. So the fact that this beauty of a camera has full-size HDMI, and I know a lot of photographers couldn't care less about that. And that's, you know, what happens when you cross over a camera from a stills to a video and both, you have both, 
both those, those needs are there. This articulating screen, I love. I love having the articulating screen. There are other people that absolutely hate it and want the X-T3's flip-out screen brought back to the X-T5. Okay. Um, do I plan on adding an X-H2? Well, the answer to that is actually going to come to me in the next couple of weeks. Um, and it's going to be based... Probably, it's going to be based more on money than anything else. I mean, come on, you know, probably, but I mean, right now, and this is a good marker, okay? Right now, if I had to decide, I would most likely get the X-H2 and not the X-H2S because of the 8K video and a couple of other things. So I, you know, however, I have not fully tested the S out. So that's, I won't know for a couple of weeks. And, you know, money, 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 money. You know, this gear is expensive. I may be selling some stuff to, to help afford it. But in the meantime, who's, who's got the time? I mean, I, you know, it's, it, I basically have to crank these out as fast as I can, which is why I need your help to let me know which videos you want. Now, we are going to open up a very big box. Okay. I mean, I have never opened a lens this big, so let's do it right now. Here we go. Okay. For those of you just joining us, we are opening up the 150 to 600 millimeter Fujinon F5.6 to F8 lens. This is unbelievable. Do I have a wide enough angle here? <laughs> Let's see if I do. I don't. Oh, we're just going to have to do our best. Let's see. Do I have any, any coverage here? No, not really. Hold on a second. Let me turn this up. Okay. There we go. Oh, that's good. I can do that. Okay. I almost broke that HDMI port. All right. So there. All right. So there. We can kind of see it there. Okay. All right, so here we go. Let's open it. Let's open it. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, strap. We have a strap. First thing on the list is a strap. Okay. Second thing is another bag or something. Okay, a strap about... Ah, here's the owner's manual. Here... Boy, that's really bright. Sorry, I got to turn it down a little bit. There's the owner's manual for it. Okay, now we've got this. Not too bad. There, that's better. Okay. <laughs> Have a look at this. Oh my goodness. Wow! <laughs> Look at this thing! Oh my gosh! Oh wow! <laughs> and uh, Fujifilm. <laughs> oh. How bad would it be if I, whoops, dropped it, oh. Okay, so here it is, folks. The telescope, I mean, look at this thing. Look at how huge this is. This is a gigantic zoom. Look at this thing. Okay, so what do we have here? Can you see it? Can you all see it? Okay, so we got switches and buttons on this thing. We got little, little adapter screw holes. We've got, let's see. Hold on, let me get the lens hood out of here. Okay. Can you see down it? No, not, not really. Okay, so there is also a... <laughs> And this is, this is just insane. It's like, oh, Neptune, right? You know, I mean, this, this, thing, <laughs> this sure would look nice back here, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, so let's stay with it. Got to look at the lens hood. 
Okay, let's let's get a good shot of the lens hood. There it is right here. And see, this is so you can grab, take off the filters and... Now, let me ask you something. For a lens like this, that would cost the money that this costs, which is a lot, should it be plastic or metal? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. In the meantime, let's get this thing on here. <laughs> All right, pretty cool. Now, let's put it on a camera. <laughs> All right, let me check in with the audience before I do that. Does it feel heavy? No, it does not feel heavy at all, actually. Uh, let me show you the markings on it. It's got buttons. It doesn't feel heavy. Really doesn't for the size. I would expect it would be heavier for sure. Um, so no, it, it does not, it does not feel heavy. Have a look at this. What do you think? No, not, it really doesn't feel heavy. That is probably the biggest surprise that I have with this lens. I would think just looking at it that it would weigh a ton. It doesn't weigh a ton. Um, I don't know how much it weighs offhand. I don't have the, the thing in front of me, but um, when I do the review, I'll, I'll go over all those, all those specs. But uh, yeah. So let's, let's get this baby on the camera here. Okay. <laughs> here it is in an X-T4. <laughs> if that's not ridiculous, look at this. <laughs> oh, I can see your atoms, you know. <laughs> Hey, I don't even know how much this lens is. Can somebody go to the, the Fuji B&H or something and plug this thing in? It's the 150 to 600. How much is this thing? I don't even know. Seriously, that's how little I've started on this, this journey of reviewing this lens. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can get, uh, oh, 3.5. Okay. Do I have five pounds? <laughs> I can't. I mean, this is really funny. Now, can I... Can, <laughs> hey, guys! You know, no, I guess I can't do that. Okay, so let me see if I can get you some images through the lens. Uh, wait, hold on. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, you are now looking through this lens. We are at 150 right now. And it looks like... Yeah, um, I can't even, the, I don't know what the minimum focus distance is, but I've already, I'm, the studio's just not big enough. Maybe I could do this. Okay, there we go. There we go. You see that, the doorknob? Okay, now, oh, there's that HDMI crap again. Remember what I said I, about the thing doesn't work? I have to jiggle it. If I hold the cord, it's crazy. If I hold it just here, if I wrap the cord around the lens, there. Okay, let's try it again. All right, do we have picture? Three, two, one, we got picture. Okay, where was I? I was over here. Okay, we are at 150, okay, 150. <laughs> Let's get some little bit brighter. All right, 150, and I'm gonna zoom in. There we go, zoomed in, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm just too close. This is ridiculous. I can't test this lens in this tiny closet of a studio, um, but you can all, 
say that you have looked through this lens with me the very first time. So yeah, this is really, really cool. Now let's see if it has, does it have stabilization? So if we go into the camera and we go into IS mode. Okay, so continuous shooting only. Yeah, let's do a little test with that. Okay, so let's look at it with, um, with IS mode. Hold on. All right, let's see what we can do here. All right, this is IS mode on. And what I'm going to do is this kind of unscientific test. I'm just going to hold the lens like this, okay? Both ways with IS mode on and IS mode off. Okay, so here it is with IS mode on. IS mode on. That's pretty, pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, let's turn IS mode off. Turn off the IBIS. And now, let's try it again. Same exact thing. My arm is in the same spot. Okay, wow. Wow, do you see that difference? That's a serious difference. So, I haven't even thought yet about how I'm going to do this review, but I will tell you right off the bat, in the first five minutes, I can conclude that this monster of a lens works very nicely, at least standing almost in tripod mode, right, with an X-T4's IBIS mechanism. All right, okay? So, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and remember, we have an X-H2 on the way as well. So let's do this. Um, let me put this away, or at least I'll put this over here. And let's take some questions and, and hang out a little bit, yeah? Because, you know, I can... To be honest with you, I can do all this by myself. I can't talk to you. I, you're here now. You're here in the studio with me now. So, and with Gear Iguana. So we're we're glad to be with you. Okay. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so where are we here? Um, prefer the 70 to 300. Okay, no lens stabilizer. I don't know anything about that. All I know is that when I turned on IBIS on the X-T4, it, it worked beautifully. So that's great. Uh, yeah, George, I'm with you too. I'm waiting for the X-T5. <clears throat> Need some water. Okay, so, Ricardo, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You folks don't have to do that, but that I'm really, really appreciate it. I'm, it's awesome you became a channel member. That is welcome to the channel. And um, so, so the 70 to 300 is out of stock, huh? That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not surprised in a way with both, you know, the supply chain issues and all of that. So that doesn't surprise me. But from what what I do understand is that the Fuji gear is becoming more available now. They, they've worked out whatever they need to work out. I'm just holding it like this because it looks cool. I'm not going <laughs> to... That's all. I mean, look at this. You know, I just realized this lens is almost as long as Gear Iguana. Look at that. <laughs> it's all about the gear. <laughs> okay, enough. Um, <laughs> okay, any questions anyone has for me before we... Is it good for street photography? Are you kidding? I guess if you're standing 10 blocks away, it would be good. <laughs> right? Unless you were asking about a different lens. Um, all right. There's the Everybody's talking about the 70 to 300. Cool. Very cool. All right. Wish this could be adapted to the GFX. Okay. Let me go, go back, make sure I didn't miss anybody. Uh, wow. $2,000. $3,000. Okay. Yeah. That's not... That's more expensive than the X-H2. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. That's a lot. All right. Well, I will definitely do videos on all of these, but I have to tell you, I'm more excited about this because, look, I mean, for most people... This is, a, this is not going to be a lens that everybody in the world is going to rush out and get. It has a very specialized purpose. 
However, this is a little bit more important to the audience because this is within a lot of people's reach. And, you know, it's, it's a very different lens than anything I've seen Fuji put out before. So I think with the gear that arrived today, the fact that we've got an X-H2S to test, we've got this, you know, this amazing monster, you know, 150 to 600, and we've got, you know, the 18 to 120, we've got enough gear to ride us through October, and that doesn't count all the other videos that are backlogged on this channel. So, and I have a video coming out tomorrow, actually. Uh, I believe it's coming out tomorrow, yeah. Um, and it's just a, it's a sponsored video, so, which is nice because sponsors equals support the channel, which means I can keep doing this. So that's, you know, that that's great. So that's, I do have a video coming out tomorrow, kind of a, I had a fun time making it. So that, that's at, that'll be about 11 o'clock. Um, so can I, I don't know from what I've used very, very limited amount of time I've spent shooting with it, I would say yes. But don't take me on that yet. I haven't reviewed it yet. I haven't really put in the time that I need to to be able to tell you what I think in terms of is it really a good all-around lens or not. You know, the 16 to 80 I felt was a really good all-around lens, but I did have issue with the focus wobbling because it was so extreme on the copy that I had. Um, but this lens right here, all, in terms of an all-arounder, I can tell you for video, it's going to be awesome. For stills, we'll, we'll just have to see. Um, okay. All that glass. That's right. All that glass. All right. Let me look at the stream health. Oh, we got a lot of people on the stream today. Awesome. Brandon, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Wow. For the X-T5 fund. Yeah. I am absolutely getting an X-T5. That, that's a... Hit. I just, even if I didn't know a single spec on it, just for the fact that almost all of my other gear at this point, all my other XT cameras, and honestly, I beat them up a little bit more than your average person because they're in the studio. I'm unplugging and plugging in stuff. I'm re constantly attaching things. But I have gone through these cameras to the point where I need another X-T camera to keep things running. So yeah, I would buy an X-T5 sight unseen, um, you know, and will it, the biggest question I have for the X-T5 is obviously it's going to have IBIS, but will it have an articulating screen or not? M I, if I had to bet on it, Brandon, I would say it will, it will. And the reason I think it will is because uh, it'll have more improved video specs, and I, I think they're just going to keep the design of the X-T4. Um, but I, I don't know. You know, who knows? It'd be interesting to find out. You know, we're only... The year's not over yet. You know, is Patrick on this uh, stream? He, he knows more than I do about all this stuff. Will the X-T5 be made in Japan? Probably not. Um... Uh, the X-T4 was not. The X-T3 was. So I, it's like they, they shifted from that. Um, you know, so I don't, I don't think it will be. But I, again, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. And yeah, that's another good question. Does it go with the 40 megapixel sensor? That's a, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, well, thank you, Marco. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you, pal. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um another 20. No, please save your money. Okay. We're all good. Everything's, everything's good. I really appreciate the support though. Thank you so much, Brandon. You're awesome. Um, and let's see, had a C1 voucher. Let's see, try it with macro tubes. <laughs> do you want me to do this with macro? Try this with macro tubes. Sure. Um, what I am going to do, there is an area where I live that has a bunch of birds and wildlife. I'm going to try and take it and get some some footage of that um, for sure. It's an 82 millimeter filter size, okay? I don't have an 82 millimeter ND filter, um, so I don't know how much, I, you know, how wide open I can get this thing on video testing, but because I have to keep the shutter speed at 1 48th. So we'll see. I mean, you know, um, it is F, what the heck is it? Okay, F. 6, 8, it's um, f5.6, so yeah, I might be able to, to do that, um, 
definitely want to check it out. I will give you the full rundown as I do in every review video for sure. But you got to see me experience it first on today's live stream for sure. Nancy, um, and the X-T5 will come out, wait a minute, we got an accountant here. Okay, we'll come out before Q1 of 2023 is over. That's Fuji's X fiscal year. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I hope, I hope so. I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, and yeah, uh, that's true. They are leaning hard into video because there is a demand for it. Let me ask you this. I mean, some I've gotten some comments from viewers who have been angry with Fuji and other camera companies for leaning into video so much and making things like, you know, the flip around articulating screen for the X-T4. And the demand, though, is is there. So what would you do if you were a camera company? And, you know, how would you just make different models? How would you do it? And I think that's a that's a challenge for them, for sure. You know, Sony has now got that new crop sensor camera that just came out, that video recently. Um, it's interesting. We're in a really great time, but an uncertain time for cameras, more than anything else. And of course, above all else, the biggest threat in the world are these things, you know. By the way, the iPhone 14, not that great, okay? If you're thinking about getting it, and you have a 13, heck, even if you have a 12, I would say skip it. You don't need to get the iPhone 14. Has a, the iPhone 13, okay, the iPhone, these look almost identical. One of them is the 13, one's the 14. The 13, you can get a closer focus distance with the main camera than you can with the 14. It's ass backwards what they did. That's the first problem with it. Camera's not as good. I don't care what they say in their fancy PowerPoint. The reality is I like the camera better on the 13. The video stabilization is better on the 14, and I have a video about that coming out. And in terms of um, battery life, um, the battery life on the 14, what's the word, sucks. It's not, it's really not good. Now, I might have something running, or I mean, there could be something I'm doing wrong, but I have never had you know, with, with the other phones that I've had, the 14, uh, the 13, the 12, and, and the rest of them, I could go a day and a half and the battery would be fine. This thing is dead by like four or five in the afternoon if I don't charge it. It just sucks through battery power. Okay, that's a mini tech review within a live stream within a Fuji channel for you. All right. Okay, so anything else we need to cover? Japan, 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 where is your camera body made? <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people want them uh, want them made in Japan, you know. Honestly, I don't care where they're made, but I want quality. Like, get rid of the micro HDMI stuff. I don't like, and I still don't like it, even on these cameras, although this is better. Yeah, they did a much better job with these. You know, that's actually another little thing I want to mention. So look at this. On the X-H2S, I like these better because they flip up like that and back down. Okay, on the X-T4, okay, you get this thing. Wobble, 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 wobble. You see that? It's not, not good. <clears throat> and they get in the way and they're problematic when you have devices attached to them and you've got the articulating screen flipping around. And, you know, if the X-T5 ditched the articulating screen, that wouldn't be the end of the world for me. I would still be happy to get it. Um, and I know some people would be, you know, shouting hallelujah from the mountaintops. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, go check that out for sure. Norman's right. Um, and I probably do have something wrong with the phone um, because, you know, the battery life, I've, listen, I'm Mr. Apple. I got a signed Steve Wozniak circuit board in my office. I'll show it to you sometime. I'm Mr. Apple all the way. But I was not happy with the battery life on this thing. Now, I, I may have gotten a dud. I don't know. Um, it's like, God, I got to go return it. It's just a hassle. Um, okay, so folks, I got to wrap this up. We're coming up to five o'clock. Guillaume, how you doing from Belgium? Awesome. Awesome. Good to see you. Good to see you. Is it pronounced Guillaume? Did I get that right? I hope I did. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
Um, yeah, live ain't easy. You're 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 darn right. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, uh, I, it's all about the gear. You know, it's it's hard to be up here with puppets and lenses. <laughs> you know, and lens. I don't know which camera's which. Um, you know, so I think we did a good job today. I think we got what we needed. We got everything unboxed. You voted on, you know, you chose the butterfly knife. See, that was just an excuse for me to show off. Um, we got, we looked through the lens. You got to see through the lens. You got to check out the XT, sorry, the X, what is this? I don't even know the gear anymore. XH2S, okay? By the way, Fuji, if you're watching, thank you so much for, for loaning these out to me. I will try not to break them. I will return them in good condition, but I am gonna tell the audience my honest opinion on them. So just letting everybody know that. All right, everyone. Um, we're gonna be doing a live event, most likely a week from today. That'll be Friday, next Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, okay? And I think we're good. Um, if I missed any of your questions, I will be going through them tonight as I get copies of all the, the chat, and I will connect with you then. Okay, George, thank you. I seriously needed to hear that. I seriously needed to hear that. You have no idea, pal. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> I really, there's a clip where I lost it, okay? And this was yesterday and the camera was rolling and I was trying, what is this crap on here? Hold on, so I got some somebody in the comments with a bunch of spam, hold on. All right, goodbye. So I, yeah, I, I'm getting more and more spam. It's crazy. So, I, by the way, I am never going to contact you through Telegram, okay? Can we just get that out of the way? All right, so I was shooting a video, and this was yesterday, and I was having trouble. It was the... It was last night. It was the firmware update. Firmware. Okay, I can say it now, but I was having trouble saying it. And I must have done it maybe six or seven times. And I just, I, I don't know. I, I've been working really hard. I had one too many Red Bulls. And I was down in this dark. There's no windows in here. You know, you lose all sense of time. There's no people. So you lose all sense of social. You're just staring at, at cameras. And I, I kind of lost it. And I... I slammed my hand on the desk and I, I you know, God, I started F this and F that. It, I went on a mini rant, you know, about how awful I look and how these awful braces and how awful I sound and how miserable I am and all this stuff. And I'm going to keep that footage. I'm going to keep that footage. Maybe we'll roll it back at the million subs. All right. It, but just so you know, it, you know, it, it's not everyone goes through uncertainty and, and whether you're a youtuber photographer whatever um and, and you would think that people who will get up and do a live stream like me with four cameras and do all this stuff would have no problem and be totally confident that couldn't be further from the truth that could not be further from the truth and so thank you george for saying that that actually meant a lot to me okay okay so um Compare different brand lenses. Okay, we got, can I get away with an XS10 or, okay. Th that's one of those questions where, what are you using it for? Can you get away with it? Hell yeah. Any camera today you buy, including this battery sucking iPhone, right? Any camera you buy today is good enough. What are you trying to accomplish? With the XS10, I'm not a huge fan of it. I tested it, I wanted to like it, but it had, I, the grip was better than the X-T4, so if you, I liked the grip better on the X-S10, but it, I didn't like the PASM that much on it. And for a small, stillsy kind of camera like that, I don't want PASM, I want regular dials. For a video-centric camera, I'm a little more forgiving, particularly with the articulating screen and so forth. Um, so which is better, the X-S10 or the X-T4? I think the X-T4. But you could poll a hundred other people and probably 50% of them will tell you the XS10. It's just a very different camera. And it's one of those things where if you have, you know, an extra hundred or so sitting around, you'd be well off renting one and getting a feel for it. Um, but 
can you get by with it? Are you shooting a lot of video where you need stabilization? Because get the X-T4 for that. So it just depends. You know, it's like anything else. It just depends. Um, it's, hard, it's hard to say for sure. Okay. Um, okay, good. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I know there's something going on with this. Sorry, I don't mean to keep harping on this, but I, I've got to charge it again. Let's see what the battery life is. Okay, it's not bad now. I charged it midday. And right now, if you look at it, this thing, it's at, um, oh, it's off. It's at 73. Okay, so, you know, it's 5 o'clock. Oh, my God. I got I to gotta get going. I'm late. All right. Um, I'm going to go take this to my kids' band practice tonight. And, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just going to relax. Believe me, I don't, I, I, I don't have an exciting life, you know. I, I shut off the camera, and maybe I'll print out the comments and and that's it um that's about it for for tonight for me <laughs> okay but please let me know in the comments what you want me to review how you know some video ideas i normally don't ask the audience i am not one of those youtubers that goes you know i need your feedback tell me your feedback tell me your feedback i i, I find that that's no that's your time that's your time. I'm not going to take up your time. So it's very rare that I'm going to ask you for you to take, give me the gift of your time and type down there, you know, ideas that will help my channel. Very rare that I'll ask that. But I'm, I'm only asking it now because I only have this gear for a few weeks. And, you know, we got to kind of make it, we got to be efficient around here. Right, Gear Iguana? So that's all. Okay. I'm going to be Bangladesh. Hello to Bangladesh. Awesome. I think this is my first Bangladesh, B Bangladeshi, <laughs> Bangladeshi, <laughs> um, the artist. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, how come it didn't work? There, the artist from Bangladesh. Um, okay. Thank you, Nancy. I'm going to go get a beer. That is exactly where I'm headed right now. Um, thank you all, especially those of you that are supporting this channel through Backstage. You are awesome. The Gear Iguana Hall of Fame, don't we love that? Backstage and Discord and all that good stuff. In the meantime, I am going to be back next week. I will see you. Um, hold on, I gotta get everything ready for the outro. Okay, here it is, outro, got it, all right. So if you liked this video, you know what to do. Give it the like and subscribe, okay? It's not a video, it's a live stream. I still got to get that right. If you like the live stream, that is. And have a wonderful, awesome weekend. I'm so glad you joined me on today's Electronic Campfire number 13. And I have to say, wouldn't you agree that number 13 is not an unlucky number today? I think we did a great job, and I'm so glad that you could join me. Okay? Take care, and I'll see you next week. Thank you, and so long.